Well, I greet you in the blessed Holy Ghost. I'm Brother DeWay, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Cry for America. We are brought to you by the Sakina Family Worship Center, where Pastor Fields is our leader. We can be reached on the phone at area code 313-300-6457, or find us online under The Cry for America. We're on Facebook, Rumble, YouTube, and the Podbean Podcast. Please leave us a like, a comment, thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, share it across your platforms, and help us to let this word of God go forth. As we are documenting God's servant, Apostle Paul. He is ministering here in Detroit, June 23rd of 2022, ministering on being bound to Christ. Ah, are you bound to the world? Are you bound to Jesus? Let's go now to Apostle Paul. Hey. Thank you, Lord. This conference, oh God, that you have commanded us to learn to abide in you, it is to make all things new. Is to bring forth the newness, yes, the newness of this life in us. Yes, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We are not churchgoers. Mm. We are those who seek to know God. Amen. We are those who seek to love Him, who Amen. seek to walk with Him, Amen. who seek to know Him intimately well so we can make Him known. Amen. That's who we are. Yes, God, we want God in our being. We Amen. want the Lord to be real to us. Amen. We want our God to manifest and reveal himself in our being. Yeah. This is what you've called us into. To know Christ intimately well. So we can make him known. So we can reveal him. In our conduct, in our attitude, oh God. Lord God, in the way we walk and commune, Lord, with our brethren. In the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So, Father, tonight we are asking you, God, for the Holy Ghost to be turned loose. Yes, so the Spirit of God will have His way in us. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of life. We call on you, Holy Ghost. We need you, Holy Ghost. We need your presence tonight. We need you to quicken us, O oh Lord. Almighty Lord God, there's nothing too hard for you. Break down the barriers of resistance in our soul. Break down, oh God, the disobedient spirit. Lord, Father God, break down the stubbornness. And Lord, bring us into the open. Bring us into the light. Bring us, oh God, in the realm where we can commune with our God and our King and our Savior. We bless your name. For you have heard us. You have heard our prayer. I know you hear us when we pray. And Father God, you brought us here so you can, Lord, do your will in us. Yeah. It is not the will of man we are looking for. It is the will of God. Yeah. Yeah. The will that has power to transform us. The only will that can change a man. The will of God. So Lord, we thank you tonight that it shall be according to thy will. You shall speak according to your will. You shall bring forth the word. That is in line with your will, and we shall walk in thy will at the end, O oh God, of tonight. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you for your people. Open their hearts. Open their hearts. Open. Let the, let the ancient word impart something to your people. Let the ancient word impart something into the being of your people tonight. So I thank you. The Father God, you will minister your word. Yes. Because you are master. You are the Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the Lord. When we speak, all things become new. Yes, so we thank you for tonight. What are you going to do? Yes. We give you the glory. Yes. Give you the honor. Yes, In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And we're going to continue with this house. But I, I'll lay a foundation right for you. Right, so that we can continue for, for tonight. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Ah, Father God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you. Yes, God, I thank you, Father God. I'm going to read this thing to remind you what we are looking for. Right? What we are looking for now. All right. In page, the page I call is it, page 95. All right? I'm going to go back there to read to you while we are here. And then we will start from, from the page 37 to read it and then refer you to page 95. So that we can go over what we are looking for. Yeah. All right? In Rich House. Ah, yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. He says here, nothing is more real. In page, in page 37, no, 36. That's this chapter. It's the it's what chapter in Rich House? It's chapter 5. When the Holy Spirit takes over. When the Holy Spirit takes possession, in about one, two, three, four pages into that chapter. And then four pages into that chapter. All right? You got your Holy Ghost book with you because God says he taught his house. So he wants us to learn this book. And it so happened that many years ago, I learned it. Ooh, yes, God. And I loved it, and it helped me. It helped me good. A lot of the things that I have seen and walked in, I learned from Rich House. I learned from God calling. And I learned from the scriptures. Hallelujah. I don't know what you learn from, but I learned from the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. He says here, Ah, it took five days when the Holy Ghost asked him, all right, okay, all right, that he wants to take over his life. He says here, it took five days to make the decision, days which were spent alone with God. Like Isaiah, I saw the holiness of God. He said, and seeing him, I saw my own corruption, my own corrupt nature. It wasn't sense that I saw. He didn't see sense. Many, many, many sins. Uh, the, the things that we commit. That's not what he saw. All right. When he saw God, when he saw the holiness of God, that's not what he didn't just see. See uh, the all kinds of sins that he committed. He saw something. He saw something, and that something is the core. Yes. The very core of his being was corrupt. Ah, yes, God. Like Isaiah, I saw the holiness of God, he said. And seeing him, I saw my own corrupt nature. It wasn't sense that I saw, but nature touched by the fall. I was corrupt to the core. I knew I had to be cleansed. I saw there was as much difference between the Holy Ghost and myself as between light and darkness. The guy is, is, is born again. Holy Ghost says, I want to come and live inside you. He says, well, brother, hold on, hold on. You are light. I'm darkness. <laughs> the difference between me and you, Holy Ghost, is like light and darkness. Ain't that something we born again? <laughs> uh, nothing is more real to me than the process. I told you guys, um, mark the word process. The process, abiding is a process. When we're going to go there, that's where we're going. The chapter of abiding. When Rich talks about what it means to abide in Christ, as John 15 talks about. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. What is the meaning? How do you do it? So he says here, ah, the whole, he says, nothing is more real. Okay. No, no, okay. The, then the process I went through for that whole week. The Holy Spirit went on dealing with me, exposing the root of my nature. Who? The root. <laughs> the root of my nature. That's what the Holy Ghost is after. The root of the old man. The root of Adam inside you. 
So when he don't take it out, how can he, how can you replant the root of Christ inside your being? You cannot have two roots, brother. I say you cannot have two roots side by side. Come on now, which root is going to be the dominant one? The Christ. The Christ root. The new man. That's what must predominate in your being. That's the new tree that is planted inside us. The old tree that comes from Adam, God condemned it. Ah, uh, any Amina, any Amina out there? Amina. Don't, 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 you know, don't keep quiet. Okay, don't keep quiet. Just say Amina. Amina. Help me out. I need your Amina. All right. Yeah. Yes, God. So don't be ashamed to say Amina to Jesus. God, that's the yeah. Lord. That's the Lord yeah. talking through me, not me. Yeah. Remember what I do. When I'm coming to stand before you, I tell the Lord, it's all yours. Whatever you want to say is what I open my heart to. My whole being is before you. Fill it with what you want. I ain't going to stop you. I'm going to, I don't stop God. Whatever he pours into me is what you will hear. I hear me talking. I'm just yielding my voice to him and he makes the sound. <laughs> he creates music in my being. I love, I love, brother. I, the more I go, the more I love him. He creates music. <laughs> I say, Jesus creates music. Oh, you, you, you call it music. I call it music. <laughs> Sweet music. <laughs> you all call it mu mu music, music. You call it music. I call it music. <laughs> oh, Lord, I love you. My goodness, you are so sweet to my soul. My soul responds to God. I tell you, my soul responds to him with the intensity okay, with which he pours into me. Okay, so he said here, the Holy Spirit went on dealing with me, exposing the root of my nature, which was self. Self. And you can only get out of a thing what is in the root. Sin was canceled. Right? Sin was canceled. And it wasn't sin he was dealing with. It was self. S-E-L-F. Self. The me and me and I and me and my dog and me. That's what he's after. The self, the thing which is that, that thing which came from the fall. You hear that? Yes. That thing that entered all right from, from, from the fall of Adam, which made man live for himself and not for God. That's the problem. Why is it that since you've been born again, you ain't yielded to God, complete and total, but you're doing some stuff on your own that God ain't, ain't called you to do? How come you can't yield completely to God? What's the problem? S-E-L-F. Self. The thing that came into man when man fell. That's what the Holy Ghost is after. And he's going to get him. <laughs> he's going to get him. He's going to dig him out. He can't hide no more. He's a sentenced man to death. <laughs> he don't want to die. <laughs> Ooh, self. Self is the problem. And then uh, uh, out of self, we have selfishness. And that's who man is. Selfish. Me, 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 me. Minima, mo, minima. Me, 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 ma. <laughs> I like that. It's a rhyme and it's good. Okay? Me. You see, when you are born again, the new man must come in straight. And it is Christ. It's Christ you know. It is Christ you know. Christ that must come out of your being. Christ and his conduct and attitude. And his vision, his mind, his everything. 
that comes into us, a new man has been planted, a new tree has been planted in us when we were born again. We don't eat the old mango. We don't eat the old apple. <laughs> it's rotten. We don't eat the fruit of the self man no more. Look at the fruit of the, the, what? the works of the flesh. That's the fruit. The fruit of the self, the me, 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 me. Adultery, corruption, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. This is what the self life produces. Right. You, do you like that? No. If you like that, you're going to hell. Right. Amen. 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 Boy, I tell you, you all don't say Amina. Sister Julia don't say Amina. Brother Brian don't say um, um, Amina. All right. Oh, Sister Chandra is on. Woo! Hallelujah for Sister Diane. He's, he's looking, he's listening to word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Put it all in Sister Diane's being. Hallelujah. And blast that demonic power Hallelujah. of that sickness out of her system. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We believe it. Amen. Yes, God. We believe it. Ah. Yes, God. Huh? Oh, she's not connected. Okay, help her. She's on, but there is, she's not connected to the audio. All right, so oh. re reach, reach her. Okay, it says here, sin was canceled. Yeah. Sin was canceled. Yeah. Sin was canceled. Yeah. Sin was canceled. Yeah. And it wasn't sin he was dealing with. It was self. That thing, I like that. He tells you clear what happened. Yeah. What you are dealing with. That thing which came from the fall. <laughs> that's your enemy that's the devil's nature that's what made the devil do things by himself self, he don't live for God no more, he used to and when he fell he brought that crooked guy into Adam, lied to him and Adam also fell like him he says he was not going to take any superficial surrender but his finger he put his finger on, on, uh, on each part of my self-life. And I had to decide in cold blood. He could never take a thing away until I gave my consent. Mm -hmm. Then the moment I gave it, some purging took place. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And I could never touch that thing again. It was not saying I was purged. And the thing still having a hold on me. No. You were purged, it gone. Yes, Amen. No, it was a breaking. And the Holy Ghost taking control. Day by day, the dealing went on. He was coming in as God. And I had lived as a man. What, what, what does the new birth not bring into you? I said, what does? You say you are born again? And who do you think came on in? Jesus. The Lord God came on in and he wants to manifest himself in your being. He wants to take over. Ah. He said he was coming in as God and I had lived as a man. Woo. And what is permissible to an ordinary man, he told me, will not be permissible to you. Amen. Right? He said this landry dog a spirit that the conference he, he attended where the Holy Ghost confronted him. Mm -hmm. This land dot experience was the crisis, which was followed by the process of sanctification. Yes, the process of sanctification. God confronts him, and now God puts him through the process of being transformed. Now he begins, brother, I've confronted you. You've allowed me to come in. Now hold on, I've come to do my job. I'm going to change you. I'm going to conform you to my image. I didn't come in just to sing a song. I didn't come in just to bless. I came in to transform you into my own image. Yes, amen. The old tree which you partook of is corrupt to the core. Amen. It can never serve God. I'm coming to plant a new tree inside you, the tree of life. Oh! So we can partake of the tree of life himself called Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. So now he says, he says here, 
uh, we continue from page 95 just to bring the process. Okay, page 95, we know we saw it the other time. In all these experiences, the paragraph right there, in all these experiences, the Lord had a twofold purpose. The blessing of the needy and the transformation of his servant. Why he came in? He came in so he can bless the needy. The need, those who need help. Those that, that his servant is going to cry on their behalf unto God. He will bless them. So the blessing of the, of the needy and then the transformation of his servant. He's going to use you to bless people. But in doing so, you will go through transformation. And that transformation system is the daily abiding. That is how he's going to change you. And that is how he's going to pour his blessing through you to others. All right? You, you see the process. Because we're going to tackle, tackle the chapter of what is it, what does it mean to abide in Christ? The Lord said, abide in me, and I will abide in you. So what does it mean? How do I abide? Because many believers don't abide. They just go to church. They just read a little word and sing a little song, they're gone. It says here, the Holy Ghost took me, ooh, I like, the Holy Ghost took me through grade after grade. He said, grade one, grade two, grade three. I went through from the very bottom. <laughs> from the very, you know, uh, uh, not even grade one, kindergarten. Yeah, 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 yeah. He went there. He took me from kindergarten. <laughs> the Holy Ghost took me through grade after grade. Okay, he said, the process, okay, the father to the orphan. I think that the, the chapter is a father to the orphans. All right, a father to the orphans, page 95. That's the chapter, a father to orphans. All right? So that, that is what, chapter 14. chapter 14. All right? So about one, two, three, four, fifth, fifth in a page, somewhere around there. Where it starts with, in all these experiences, the Lord had a twofold purpose the blessing of the needy and the transformation of his servant. The Holy Ghost took me through grade after grade. He said, the process of changing one's natures, notice, one's natures, all kinds of aspects of your nature, must, must go through transformation. He must transform them and bring in the new nature, the new attitude, the new conduct, the new everything that belongs to Christ. Your old nature had all kinds of attitudes that were stinking. The new nature has attitudes that are divine. Yes. So he's bringing in all the changes of the, uh, uh, all that is in the nature of Christ into you. The process of changing one's natures, that is replacing the self nature by the divine nature. You hear me? Amen. Now we are about to go to the chapter, chapter where we're going to learn. How the self nature is replaced. It's replaced by the divine nature. This thing making some noise, but I don't. Noise. It's Charlotte's internet. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now he says here. Ah, the process of changing one's natures, that is replacing the self nature by the divine nature, was very slow. And bitter. Oh! You got to walk through it. You got to live it out. Yeah. That is why he, he gives you instructions to follow. Yeah. That's why he tells you don't eat you know breakfast or don't don't don't, don't do this, but live this way. For this assignment, this is how you should live. Because you're going to live through it day by day. By the time, you, and, and, and remember, as you are living through following the instructions he gives to you daily, you are also praying for the people. Yes, Don't forget, abiding makes you pray for the people on, you know, in your heart. Yes, 
the people whose burdens you are carrying. You have to, you have to cry to them. You yourself, you are going through some, some pruning. But as the pruning goes on, you cry to, you know, to God. For the people who need help. And you yourself must be transformed too. So don't forget, in the abiding system process, the, the one who is, who is crying on behalf of the needy, so God will bless them. He himself is a subject of transformation. He's been transformed. How, how is he done? By the instructions given to him as to how to live, abide in him. So as you follow those instructions, all right, and you are crying unto God for the people, you yourself have been transformed because you are obeying. Amen. Whatever word God gives you in the Bible, in the word, you must obey. Yes, God. Because obedience is what brings about the change. Yes. Jesus. Now listen. He says, uh, ah, yes, God. The process of changing one's natures Replacing the self nature by the divine nature was very slow and bitter. It was a daily dying. This is what the abiding does. Because you are communing with the Lord, you are waiting upon Him. Because in abiding, you set you know, a special you know, time aside where you wait upon God, where you read the word of God in His presence. All right? So, what's going to happen to you? A daily dying. And showing forth the life of Christ. That's it. That's not going to happen to you. As you daily abide in Christ, you are dying and then you are living. Yeah. Ah, I like that. You are dying and you are living. Some part of you is dying. The self-life is, is, is being dug out. And the new life is, is, is coming forth. Okay, so you are being transformed even as you are crying unto God for the people in prayer. Because you are an intercessor. Okay, you cannot just pray one prayer and then quit. You are bound to stay in the prayer until God answers it. Ah, I didn't hear no Amina. Amina. <laughs> All right, so now I have finished this. I just did the foundation, all right, just to refresh your memory. We'll go, we'll, we'll go on. But before we go on, some of you, you don't know what God does when he saves you. How does God, all right, you know, you know how does he relate or what does he do for someone who has come to God, who has received Jesus Christ? Some of you, you have never gone through this. The Lord has never done this because you never allowed him. I'm going to read something here. And it must happen to you. If it ain't happened, if it ain't happened, if you haven't walked with the Lord so that he has brought you into the inner circle, okay, all your life there's no intimacy. There's no power from the being of Christ into your being because you've never communed with him. All you do is just go to church. You are still, you know, following your lifestyle as you did it in the world. But it's, it's not so. You see, ministers don't preach the word because they themselves don't know it. Well, uh, now, you can't preach what you don't know. You can't give to people what you haven't experienced from the hands of God. So let me read this to you. Okay, let me read this to you. Okay, it's uh, November 28th. November 28th of God calling. Let me read that to you so that you understand. What, what, if it hasn't taken place, it must take place. If since you, you, you were born again, this haven't happened to you, it has to happen to you. Ah, I'm not hearing no amen, no amen, no amina. You all don't like the word. <laughs> Look, look at it, November 28th. The way of the Spirit. Listen to it. The way of the Spirit. Not the way of man-made religion. The way of Christ with the souls that come to him. Okay? 
if you have not gone through this, your life, your life ain't got no, no, no impact on people. Oh yeah, you go to church, you sing in the choir, but what is your impact? When we talk to people, how are they affected? By the word. Does the word get to their being? Are you coming from the inner circle with Christ? Ah. Ooh, are you walking in the inner secret, in the intimate union with Christ in which you have lived ever since he saved you? Amen. He says here, the way of the spirit. Jesus, we come to thee with joy. That's what the women said. The joy of meeting me should more and more fill your lives. <laughs> Ooh, the joy of meeting me should more and more fill your lives. It will. Your lives, listen to it right away. That's the ball. <clears throat> that's, the big, that's the big bomb. When you don't know, you don't know. If you're not taught by your pastor or by the man of God under whom you sit, brother, you just be going to church. That's it. That's all you do. Go to church and look for some work to do for God. And the work you do ain't got no power. Wow. Ain't nobody responding to you. Yes, amen. It says here, your lives, your lives must first of all be narrowed down. Do you hear it? Yeah. You come Somebody, somebody has been, let, let's say he's been in Hollywood. I'm, I'm using that as an example. Hollywood star. All right? He knows all kind of people. He goes everywhere. All right? Uh, everywhere. And then he comes to Jesus. He's the one that do his star stuff. He said, who not do this and go here and go here and go here and go here. He don't know no Jesus. How can he impact the life of the people? He talks to. First of all, he has to be narrowed down. Amen. Bound to Christ. First. Amen. Bound to Christ. That is what the abiding does. Binds your soul to Christ intimately. And you ain't going to lose that. I say you ain't going to lose that intimacy. Amen. Once you have been communing with him and the Lord has stamped you on the inside. Woo! His stamp is set on the inner being of you. You never lose that freshness of Christ all the days of your life. Wherever you go, it is fresh. Because you learn to be intimate with him in the beginning of your walk which many people don't do. They go, they are, they are born again all of a sudden, they say, uh, sit in Sunday school and uh, pay your tithes and then go out and witness and do this and do the activities. Activity, 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 and then you are discouraged. You are exhausted and you have no inner reality of Christ. I'm, tell, I'm telling you truth. I'm telling you truth. I'm not a church goer. I wasn't raised up like that by God. I was raised up to be intimate with him in the very beginning. I read this. The Lord said, this is the way. I tell you, I've read this book over 40 years. I know inside and out. I can help somebody. <laughs> he says here, your lives, when, when you come to Christ, your lives must first, must first of all be narrowed down more and more into an inner circle of the circle life with me. First, you learn me. Me and you. First, me and you. We commune. Don't worry about the, the outside world. You see? The, the people turn them loose to go and witness and they have no impact their words don't help nobody God, they ain't got no freshness of life no reality in what they say it says here 
I will narrow down your life when you come to me from the world. When you come to me from the devil's kingdom, <laughs> into my kingdom, I got to narrow you down. Hold on, I put the chains on you. I put my yoke on you. And I bind you to myself. Oh my Lord. I bring you to an intimate relationship with me first. Get to know me. Many don't know Christ. They know about him. But Christ is not living. It's not a living reality in their being. Ah, Jesus. Listen to what he says. Your lives must first of all be narrowed down. When you come from the world, narrow down more and more into an inner circle life with me. The three of us, because he's talking to the, what, to the two ladies. So he said the three of us, the two ladies and then Christ. But if you are alone, you and Christ. And then, ah, look at the step. Listen. And then, as that friendship becomes more and more engrossing, as that friendship with you intensifies and grows, as the daily communion with me as my friend, and I am your friend, and you are learning from your friend Christ, as that friendship grows, intensifies, see that? As that friendship becomes more and more engrossing, more and more binding, more and more what? Binding. How binding? How binding? He binds you to his heart. Remember something. When a soul comes from the world to Christ, you're, ah, see, there's all kinds of chains that bind the soul to the world. Spiritual change. Bind your soul to the world. So when he brings you to the kingdom, the chains must be cut off. What binds? You see, you have all kinds of interests, all kinds of friendships, all kinds of you know, uh, 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 relational activities with people, your friends, and we go here and we come here. That's what you did, you did in the world. You just roaming around in the world. So you are bound to those interests, to those friends, to those activities that you used to do in the world. Yeah. When Jesus saves you, the chains of those activities must be cut off. Because your soul is still bound to that. So people don't understand it. In the spirit, there are chains that bind the soul to earth. Why then are you born again, but the world still, still attracts you? That chain was never cut off. That spirit chain that bound your soul to the world, when you came to Jesus, it was never cut off. So it's, it's dragging you out there. That's the reason why many people have, are so much interested in the world. They still go into the world. They still have their pleasure in the world. They still go move, move, move. They move. <laughs> move. Moving. <laughs> you go to movies. Believers in movies. Because that's what they used to do in the world. And that change still draws them to move. <laughs> and they are moving all along <laughs> towards the world all the time. Okay, brother, when you come to Jesus, you have chains. Okay, that must be cut off. Attitudes that are still worldly, you come to Jesus with. And if you don't allow Jesus to be intimate with you, to, to cut them off, and then bind you with cords of love. Bind your soul. Ah, Jesus, my beloved Lord, bound my soul to himself with the cords of love. Yes. And I stayed with him. I stayed with him. And the world lost its grip over me. 
Because the grip the world used to have with me, the Lord cut it off yes, and bound my soul with cords of his love. Yes, intimate union with him. I started this life with an intimate seeking of Christ to know him. I read this thing, I saw it. Are you hearing me? Amen. You still have change that the world works through. You still have interest. You know, in the world that you are going to chase after. Ain't that something? You are in the house of God, but the world is calling you. He didn't say amen. I know you ain't saying amen. Brother, I'm telling you truth. If you do allow Christ to cut off the chains of the world, okay, that, that moves you towards the world all the time. You see, some people, they can't stay at home. They can't stay at home because that's the way they used to live in the world. Friends, friends, friends roaming around. You come to Jesus too in the evening. Brother, recline with Christ. Seek the Lord with Christ Jesus Christ. Filling your being with his presence. No. He has to go to some friends. He has to go movie, movie, movie. You got to go and sit somewhere and then talk. Let's go and, and, and grab a bite. They bite until the night comes. <laughs> Brother, I know you all don't like it, but I'm exposing it. I'm telling truth. Nobody told you I'm telling you. This, this, is, this is spiritual truth. This is the word of God. It has to. Your soul must be bound by the word of God. By the cause of the, of the Lord. Ah, the cause of the Lord must bind your soul to him. So then, I, I, I have to go to his house, but let me lay down. He says here, and then gradually, he says here, uh, 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 as that friendship becomes more and more engrossing, more and more binding, then gradually, the circle of your interest will do what? will widen. You see that? I tell you, listen, am I not talking to all kinds of people? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't talk to nobody because I didn't know what to tell them. But I was learning from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I learned from Christ in intimate relationship. I spent hours with him. I read God calling. I read Bible. You hear me now? Because I had nothing to give to people. I just came from philosophy, the realm of philosophy. I came from Latin philosophers. I came from French philosophers. I came from Greek. <laughs> so my mind was philosophized. Okay, that's how my background was. And if I don't know Jesus fresh, I'm going to talk to people with my philosophy background. <laughs> So the Lord said, you stay with me first. Learn. Learn and let me cut off the chains that bind you to the world. That bind you to your old life. Okay? Remember this. This is true. Some people, the worldly you know, stuff that you still have in your attitude, because it came from the old life. It's never been dealt with. So the devil uses that, that this and bring you to the world. And you're happy. Woohoo! walking free. <laughs> you ain't free. <laughs> Them devils are having a good time with you. So he said here, and more and more as the friendship becomes more and more engrossing, more and more binding, then gradually the circle of your interest will widen. You now, you see, all of a sudden, it, it was so, I remember it as if it were yesterday. All of a sudden, say, about two or three years or four years, Okay, I'm just walking with God, seeking God intensely. I want my soul, my soul to be, you know, to know God. I say, Lord, I must know you. And how do I talk to people? The word of God, how, what, what must it do to the people's soul? How do I, you know, you know, preach to them? How do I share with them? All these things I was, I was learning at the foot of the cross. Yeah. Then there came a time, brother, there was a sweet desire to reach out as you. To reach out to people. I said, now, what you say? Just talk to them. Just greet them. Just express them. Just share how joyful you are. 
Brother, I will go to church or I talk about the joy of the, of the Holy Ghost in my soul. <laughs> That's all I said. He said, oh, I said, my brethren, Jesus is love. Jesus is joy. Jesus is your, he will give you his peace. That's what I was saying because that's what I was feeling it in my being. Amen. So I had the interest to express this to them. Okay? And as I did that, it increased. It deepened. And I have never, you know, stopped. It became a ministry. It became something that people want to hear. Because I got something fresh. <laughs> oh, the intimate relationship of Jesus Christ is what released me. To go out there. And I went out there from the inner circle of what Christ has wrought in my being. You hear that? I didn't go there with worldly tentacles. I went there with spirit cords. <laughs> so everybody that, that came into contact with me, they stayed with me. You see that? They stayed. Why? Because the freshness of Christ, okay, got them. And they wanted to hear some more. Amen. Are you hearing me now? That's how, that's how I came into, into ministry. Mm -hmm. Out of the experiential encounter with Christ. Okay? I sought him and wanted to know him. And he told me that when he saves a soul, he has to cut him off. Cut him off. If I could draw it on, 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 on the board, I would, I would draw it for you. How the soul is surrounded with chains linking him to the world. Okay? The soul, without Jesus, is he's bound with cause of interest. So many interests that absorb your time, your money, your everything in the world. And you come to Christ and you want to continue the same lifestyle? No. Something new must happen. You must have something to go get to go and give, not a world stuff, but Christ stuff. Amen. So you stay with Christ in the intimacy of fellowship, crying. I want to know you. I must know you, Lord. How do I preach? I, I remember one time here. One time I had a you know you know a dream or or a vision, and there, were, there, there, there was supposed to be a, a meeting, okay, a crusade or something. And I was asked to come. Then I came, no, no, then we were all behind the platform, you know, this thing behind the, what, what, the screen, how do you call it? Yeah, the platform behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. the, and then they said, all of a sudden they said, hey, uh, brother Isna, you are the one going to preach. So hold on, what, what, what am I going to do? So I said, I'm going to open, open the curtains and look at the people. Brother. <laughs> when I saw the brother, the multitudes, brother, it scared me. I said, uh-uh, I ain't going to preach nothing. I ain't going to know how I, I can't. Right there, the Lord said, do you see it? That's the reason why you should pray. Because you don't have the boldness to face them. You see, and that was why I know, all right, prayer has a job to do in, in my being. Prayer has a job to do in my being before I can preach for Christ. What are you going to say? Yeah. And the multitude that I saw, I, I, I stood before multitudes in the Ivory Coast in 1990. 100,000 plus, brother. I've seen that twice in, in, uh, in Amina's hometown, Togo. He was there. Over 40,000 people. Some were climbing in trees so they can hear the word. You hear that? I've seen that. But how did I get there? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go look for it. I grew on days. Ah, brother, you are wasting too much time trying to make something happen. Live with Christ. Live the life. Abide in him. Spend time, precious time with Jesus. Don't worry. Invest time in the word. Invest time in prayer. Invest time in fasting. Invest time in praying in the Holy Ghost. And what happens to you when a man you know, makes investment? Does he not have dividends back? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. All right. When you invest hours, time, right, in the word of God, when you invest time in prayer, pray, praying in your, in your understanding, 
if you when you invest time in fasting, when you invest time in praying in the Holy Ghost, are you hearing me now? Amen. Then the dividends comes from God. Amen. What is the dividends? Okay, only one word can describe it. It is called given. Given is the result of these four activities that you invest time in, working together in your being. It produces the ability to have something to give. Woo! That has been the secret of my life. Because of the four pillars, what I call the four pillars of the inner life, you all don't want to develop it. I told you since Moses left Egypt. <laughs> You don't want to develop it. But the four pillars of the inner life must be developed. Amen. Must be built to support your inner life. The result will be that the Holy Ghost, the Word, the fasting, the prayer will all work together to produce life in your being. And God said, you see that? I give you life. Go give it out. <coughs> you have something to give. Brother, I got something to give. I, 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 I hope you see that this, this African crazy man, he got something. To, <laughs> he got something to give. I got something. You may not want it, but it don't, don't matter. I know I got something. I got God. <laughs> I got Holy Ghost in my being. I got love. I got joy. I got peace. From Jesus, Jesus, Son of the Living God, I give you praise. You gave me love. You gave me joy. You gave me peace. You gave me boldness. You gave me Holy Ghost. Ah, where did you come from, brother? <laughs> Brother, today I'm just, I'm just opening it up for you to see. You don't get into ministry because you look good or because you, know, you go to church or because you are an elder. Elder don't have nothing to give. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't no, no, of no use to, know, to nobody. When you invest in the four pillars of the inner life, the word of God, prayer, Fasting and praying in the Holy Ghost. Ooh. Just invest. <coughs> May I have some water, please, my dear? Okay, just invest in them. Spend time. Time makes money. You know that. And the money you're going to make is called spirit money. Spirit reality. Spirit possessions will be given to you in your being. Thank you. Oh, uh, brethren, I love you. My desire is to impart something to you. Yes, thank you. To give you something. Okay, to listen. For me, I don't care. All I want is I give something to somebody. What I know I can I cannot just let it sit down there. I must impart to somebody because I know I can help somebody. I can help somebody by the grace of God inside me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I can take somebody yeah. and then just me and him, I will raise him up in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. No, so I'm, I'm telling you, if you resist, you resist your own peril. Mm. Because me, I, I'm, I'm happy. Mm. I just got something to give and I give it. God bless my soul with the Holy Ghost reality. Why would I sit down on it? I will talk about my Jesus forever and ever and ever. And I will let him know. I will let him be known to you. I will tell about Jesus living in my being. He says here, ah, then gradually the circle of your interest will widen. Huh? I've gone everywhere. I've gone African, African nations. I've gone uh, America. I've, I've gone a lot of places in this nation. How? Because I've got something. 
You don't go there without something. God must give you something. And so he says, when you come from the world, you, 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 you be patient. Seek me. Let me cut off all the chains that the world bound you with. Let him set you free from the worldly influence. And then let me bind you to myself. Oh, oh. Bind you with the cord of the cords of love. From my heart to yours. And stay close to me. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release you very soon, he says. Okay? You will have something to give. But you stay until I say go. Until I, I, I put it in your being, the desire to go out. To go out and talk to me to people. You see that? They, they, they were, in the beginning, people thought, thought I was so weird. Because I wasn't talking. They, they come and pick me up to go to church. Okay, I'm quiet in the car. Just quiet. He said, I show me uh, what to papa. You don't speak. <laughs> I said, no. He said, me, me proga, proga to papa. I said, I'm, I'm thinking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I was weird to people. Okay, because I wasn't getting involved in their talking, talking, wasting energy. Amen. I was quiet thinking about Jesus. That's how I did it. That's what I did in the beginning. Jesus was all I had. So I was thinking about him all the time. Okay? I'm telling you truth. So you can choose what you want to do. You want to stay close to Jesus and let him, let him impart something to your being. Let him give you something by reading the word of God, by praying, by fasting, and by blessing the Holy Ghost. He says here, uh, he says, to work, no, for the present, he said, for the present, do not think of it as a narrow life. Because I'm binding you to myself, don't think, oh, this is too narrow. Oh, I know, I'm, all, I'm bound, I'm this, I'm not free. You're lying to yourself. The devil is lying to you. Mm -hmm. You are learning to be free. Mm -hmm. Am I not free now? No. <laughs> I'm so free. But I'll be, I'm bound on the inside to him, so I can only be free in the spirit. Okay, I do, I'm not free to go and do what I want. I'm free to do what, what pleases him. That's the secret. He, he releases you. God frees you because you have learned his nature. You have learned his attitudes. You have learned how to walk with him. You have learned obedience unto him. So he, he will turn you loose. He knows you ain't going to play the fool out there. Because the spirit of God inside you won't let you play the fool. You are free to go and represent Jesus Christ wherever he sent you. And he knows you conduct yourself well. Amen. You see that? Because I learned it in the intimacy of those years. Amen. You are the only one talking about Amina. Where's the Amina man? He ain't saying no Amina. He gone again. <laughs> Lord have mercy upon him. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he says, for the present, do not think of it as a narrow life. I have my purpose, my loving purpose, in cutting you away from other work and interest for the time. You see that? I know why I have to cut you off from other interests and other things that you like to do. It's not time for that. That's not what I want you to do, to get involved in all kinds of activities or going here and doing here and doing that all by yourself. Yes. I'm not there with you. You see? So you hold on. I got a purpose. He says here, then he explains some more, to work from large interest and a desire for great activities and world movements. Okay? If you start from there, great activities, world movements, and ministry, if that's how you start with, to the inner circle, and then, and then think like, well, maybe I need to uh, bring my ministry into Jesus. But uh, you've been doing them. Big activities around. Now, I want to come to Jesus, bring all this to me. It ain't going to work. You first start with Jesus alone. Learn Jesus and bring Jesus into everything that, that you're going to do. Okay, so he says, to work from large interests and a desire for great activities and world movements to the inner circle life with me 
It's really the wrong way. You don't start from the world and then come to me. You come to me. I cut you off from the world. And then later, when I built you up, I send you to the world. Ah, yes, God. So he said here, that is why so often, when through all these activities and interests, a soul finds me, yeah, that, a soul wants me, okay, he said, ah, I need Jesus. After all, through these all activities, a soul now finds me, comes to me, I have to begin our friendship by cutting away the ties that bind it to the outer and wider circle. I have to carry him off from the world. I have to carry him off, carry him off from all the uh, big activities he was involved in. You see that? So that's why I have to do that. Because to start from big ministries, you build something on your own big time, and they want to come to me so I can, I can use what you built. What are you talking about? I build my own. What I build, I build in your being. I build it in your being. I lay the foundation in your being first. In the secret place of the most high with me. Yes, Amen. And when I have a step, ah, I tell you, the Lord must have confidence in the people he uses. Yes, he must build a relationship with them. Yes. And they must know him. Amen. That when they go out in the name of the Lord, no foolishness. Amen. No he ain't going to just raise you up anyhow. There will be discipline. There will be, be how to conduct yourself, how to represent him. His character, his attitude, his desires, his interests will be everything that you must, you must be involved in. I pray that you, this word be something new. Be something new to you, a new understanding. Maybe since you came to Christ, no, nobody told you. That I, listen, you have to start with the inner intimacy, knowing Christ deeply in your being and allowing him to establish his stamp. <sighs> Everybody that belongs to Jesus, there is a divine stamp on him. Amen. My Lord. I say everyone that knows Jesus intimately is stamped with the approval of God Amen. in your character. In the way you represent him. It is stamped with the seal of God. You belong to him. He can trust you any, any moment. He can call on you. He knows he's built a solid rock in your being. That you ain't going to crumble. Ah, Jesus. Today is something new. I say something new being, being imparted to you by the Lord. It's about time. That, that we, we, we became men of God, women of God. It don't matter what your background is. You just let Jesus have his way. Jesus. Let Jesus have his way. He will change you. Yes. Come on, brother. <laughs> Jesus, oh. he says here, when it has, you say, hello, yeah, let me read again. That is why so often, when through all these activities and interests, a soul finds me, I have to begin our, our friendship by cutting away the ties that bind it to the outer and wider circle. When the soul, when it has gained strength, you see that? When the soul has lived with him enough, or okay, waited with him enough to get strength, when the soul has gained strength and learned its lessons in the inner circle between me and him, when the soul has learned the lesson he needs to lead, okay, about my intimate relationship with him, it can then widen its life. Hallelujah. Woo! It can then widen its life. Working this time, notice, Working this time from within Amen. out. Yeah. Ah, from everything is, is within. Amen. You take outside into the world what God has placed on the inside of you. That's what you take out. Amen. 
I don't take I, I don't take nobody no stuff to go out there. I take what I know God put in my being. What I have tasted, what I have lived, what I have tested, what I have experienced, what God has poured in my being, that's what he sends me with. Amen. He's the author. Right. Thank you, Jesus. you go out there now, he said, working this time from within out. Taking then to each contact. Brother, it is true. I say it is true. Taking to then to each contact, each friendship, the inner circle influence. Amen. When I meet you, or okay, I don't know you, I meet you, and then we're talking, and we're talking later on, he said, hey, this guy, he got something. Whatever I have will overcome you. It will create desire in your heart, all right, you want to walk with me. You want to know some more. Because you don't come, you cannot come and convince me to follow you. No. Why? Christ is settled in my being. Christ is there. Solidly. He ain't bound to nobody. I don't follow you. I follow him. And I bring him wherever I go. I bring the inner intimacy. The stuff he poured in, the spirit substance of love, of joy, of peace, of strength, of hope. That's what I take into my relationship now. Yeah. Everybody who comes in touch with me, you will get Jesus. <laughs> hey, 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 if you don't know, ask, ask Julia. Julia, over 10 years now, right? You, you, over 10 years now? How many years now, Julia? Max Scribe? 12 years. Uh, 12 years. 12 years I follow her <laughs> because she wanted Jesus that is, that is taking care of her in me and through me. So I bind them to Jesus. I bring you to Jesus. I don't bring you to me. <laughs> Ooh, look at Paul. Uh, look at Paul. To whom did he bring the sheep? To Jesus. Oh, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. I can say that. You see that? Because I have walked with him. I have stayed in his presence. I have listened to his heartbeat in my being. So I ain't going to take something different from what me and him talk about, from what he poured in my show. I ain't going to do something different. I'm going to do what he poured in my being. Because that is the only thing the Holy Ghost will let you do. What the Holy Ghost gave you is what he wants you to share. Yeah. Amen. Are you hearing me? Uh, uh, listen, you don't have to be like me. No, you don't have to. I'm, 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 I'm strange. Because me, I can shake my leg. You can shake your leg. <laughs> you can shake your leg and be happy as I am. But I can shake it because it's part of my, 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 my stuff. <laughs> But you will be different. You will be you. you. Your personality is different from mine. But God will work through your personality and give you something to give. He will use you just as you are. He will just break some stuff here. and <laughs> He will just mold them and, and, and tear out some stuff. You will be whining. You don't like it. But let him do his work. <laughs> And when he finished, you will like what you see. Have you seen John G. Lake? He says, when I work my, 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 my three-piece suit and I go and stand in the mirror and I look at it and say, yes, God lives in that man. <laughs> I like it. God lives. He knows God lives in that man. <laughs> Brethren, this is what has been lost. The true discipleship. Okay. The true discipleship have been lost. We do discipleship by, by just teaching some, 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 some word, some, 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 what, some, some scriptures. You say you are a disciple. Brother, disciple is life. Mm -hmm. To be a disciple is to have the life of Christ revealed in you. That's it. The life of Christ comes forth in your being. You follow him 
as he taught you. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, he says here, uh, each friendship, the inner circle in front. And this is to be your way of life. You hear that? This is to be your way of life. Always taking the inner circle influence that you develop with Christ. The inner intimacy that you are like Christ to pour into your being. That is what you take out into every place you go. Wherever I go, I will represent Christ. And I'm confident in the power of the Holy Ghost and the grace of God that they will not fail me. Are you hearing me? Yeah. This is Christianity. This is what will make you a servant of God. And this is what will take you to heaven. Do you think you can live like this with him and you go to hell? No. I tell you. He said, and this is, the, this is to be your way of life. This is the way of the spirit. Man so often misunderstands this. How many people don't understand this? How many ministers are in the pulpit have no idea of this? Huh? What, 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 what's the problem? I tell you. I finished God calling. Uh, we're going to go, Risha. What time is this? What? <laughs> what, what, what time is it? 946. 946. All right, all right. I got some 45 minutes. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I want to I wanna show you something. All right. God at even tide. All right. God calling two. I'm going to read something. Then straight we go to reach out. But this is prelude. This one set the foundation, set tells you why it is important that we, we learn what Rishao learned. Because he has something to give. Through all the, all the hell of breaking and everything that the Holy Ghost did with him, he gave him something to give. Yeah. Okay. January 3. God had even tied. January 3rd. Abide in me, and I in you. You hear that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Does it not tell about John 15? Yeah. So he, 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 he's going to explain John 15 stuff here. He's going to explain what, what, what this abiding does. So that you understand how important it is for you to abide. He says here, this year, 2022, this is the year we are in, right? Amen. All right, so this year, dwell much upon this stupendous truth. Overwhelming, huge truth. Abide in me and I in you, so it's a huge truth. Yes, Tremendous truth. Overwhelming, big brother. Abide. He said, he said, this year dwell much upon this stupendous truth. You need to abide in me this year to share in the spirit life of the universe. You know it is the spirit life that controls everything. It's the, spirit, it's the Holy Ghost that controls everything. And he said, abide, abide in me. So you can share in the spirit that controls the whole. It is not said in, in Hebrew that he, he upholds all things by the word of his power. That's right. Amen. The word of his power is, is the power of the, of, of the spirit life. Amen. So he says here, you need to abide in me this year. Abide in me this year. Abide so that when you abide, you see, you see, oh, when you abide in me really, and my spirit fills your being, you are able to relate to all, not just human beings. You relate to all kinds of circumstances in the spirit. Okay? You relate. Okay? You know what happened? Let's, something like uh, traveling out of your, uh, 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 traveling in the spirit. Okay? 
that John G. Lake just traveled in the spirit. That's right. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he just left his body. And his body was kneeling down in South Africa in the, in the conference. And his spirit was taken out. Just like Prophet uh, uh, Wadanchi. His, his spirit is taken out. And he's so taken out on an errand. God sent him to Scotland. Up there in the in the icy cold place in Scotland, his body is still kneeling down in prayer. Okay, you know, in South Africa, and he gone on a mission. What is that spirit life? That is spirit controlled life. That is a Holy Ghost life. But why come? How come we don't go there? Because we don't abide in Him. There's no communion, intense communion that allows God to transform us. So he said, this year, this year, uh, you need to abide in me. Yes, this year, to share in the spirit life of the universe, in its creative power and energy. Thus, you are a part of God's whole. Yes. You relate to the whole of creation. You relate in the spirit. You are, the, the creation is beautiful when you are in the spirit. You see how in heaven flowers talking to human beings who are in heaven. Flowers, I'm happy you are here. I, oh, flowers can talk. But the Lord said all of creation speaks to him. They hear him. He said the only guy who don't hear him is man, rebellious man. The trees worship him. The trees know his voice. The animals hear him. Is that something? Man alone don't hear him. But when you are in the spirit, you begin to develop a bond with all of God's creation. It's amazing. Okay, so he says, abide in me. Abide in me. Your life, your life will grow and increase. I'll be able to use you more. Okay, then he says here, but I must abide in you. Said, abide in me and I'll, and I'll abide. This is John 15 stuff. But I must abide in you. For only so can I express my love and power and truth through you interpreting them in deed and look and word. Listen, when I'm happy, where does it come from? I'm interpreting what I'm feeling in my being. I'm bringing for what God is pouring in there that you don't know, but I can express it. Okay, so I pour, you see, he said, you interpret what I'm pouring to you. What I'm pouring to you brings joy, you shout at it. <laughs> Woo! The Lord said, he said, he said who, 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 who do you think make you shake your, head, your leg like that? He said, I know you get happy. Because I thrill you in your soul. And you go that that's, that's me doing everything that I allow you to do. Ain't that something? <laughs> he said, when you do that, you are happy. It's me too. I'm happy too because I'm in you. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> 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 God, God can be joyful. Listen. Look. Oh, you are too late. You are too late. Brother, do, do it on time. <laughs> you, you know what? One time what the Lord said, he said, he said, babies in the womb. He said, I talk to them. <laughs> he said, I talk to the babies in the mother's womb. I talk to them. He said, said there are times when you see a picture, I see that they are smiling. So I'm talking. I'm having a good time with them. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a God. Huh? I talk to like, at times babies babies are lying down there and they, they smiling. Uh, have you seen some before? Oh, they lie down. Nobody talking to them by itself. God talking to them in their soul. <laughs> oh brother. When when there are there are certain you know you know children, me I've seen them. You know, they, when, I, when I'm around, they feel drawn to me. What is that? That's the Holy Ghost. It's not me. Holy Ghost, you know, draws them. They feel something that draws them. They get happy when they come close. 
Why? I can relate to them in the spirit. So brother, let God cleanse you. Let God sanctify your spirit. Because ain't no crookedness in God. Ain't no darkness in God. You don't, you don't do that. Abide in the light. Abide in the light. You'll be able to impact people's lives. I, I, I gave you a testimony you know, about Quebec when I was there many, many years ago. You all don't, you, you all don't remember that? I went to an office with my fa one of my, well, yeah, okay, my family, you know, you know, remember Brother George? Okay, he went into the office. That's where he works. He went into the office. Okay, show me. Why not sit over here? You know, that's a check. I know. A chair there and there. And then wait for me. I didn't talk. I just sat down quiet. Just talking my tongues on the inside. <laughs> I like it. I didn't know what happened. Many weeks back, okay, many weeks back, then George said, Somia, do you know, I forgot to tell you about this. When I took you to the office and you were sitting down there, the woman was overwhelmed. <laughs> the secretary there said, who is this man? He got something. What is about it? He was asking, he said, he said, he was asking me a question. Who is this guy? What, what, the, he, he looks strange, he looks good, there's something about him. It is there's peace too. I ain't said a word. I'm, I'm just sitting down there. Why? Holy Ghost is working. Holy Ghost is flowing out of, oh my Lord. You know what is happening to, happen to me nowadays? I don't know. But he, he, I don't know what's going on. When I sleep, by the time I wake up, I'm wet. My whole body is hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wake up, my wife says, see, I'm wet. It's just hot. My body is hot. <laughs> Fire burning in my being. I tell you, brother. It's amazing. The Holy Ghost anointing is fire. Okay? So, brethren, let's, let's go. He says here, but I must abide in you, for only so can I express my love and power and truth through you interpreting them in deed and look and word. In these words of mine, that is uh, abiding me and I will abide in you. In these words of mine, okay, you have my twofold nature. In the words I said abiding me, you have my twofold nature. In uh, the strong protector, so strong to shield. And offer you, my guest, all provision you need. That's, that's what you have. The strong protector who abides in you. Okay? Then he says here. And then you have me in my humility. One with you. Your close companion. Dwelling in you. And dependent on you. Think on these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ inside you depends on you. How? Because if you don't express him, he, can, he, he, he can't express himself. Because he depends on you, okay, being able to pick up on what he's pouring in your being and express it. He depends on you to show the joy that he puts in your being. So he, 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 he that's, that's very humbling for the Lord to depend on, on his people to express him. That's why he said, abide in me, and I will abide in you. Yeah, when you abide in me, I protect you. When you abide in me, my strength is yours. When you abide in me, my joy is yours. Everything that is in me is yours. Yeah, yeah. And then when I abide in you, then I can express who I, who I am through you, you know, sharing it with the people. He said, it takes humility of your God to depend on you. Ain't that something? A humble God alone can do that. Depending on his creature. His creature to express him. To reveal him. And he quietly you know, lives inside you. Is that not what the father did with Christ? Did, did, did we ever see the father? We didn't see him. But he was in Christ. But Christ was talking about him. Christ talked about him. That's why we knew the father was with him. If Christ didn't talk about him, would anybody know that there's a father inside him? See, that is how humble the father was to depend on the son, for the son to reveal him. 
Brother, it's the same thing with us. The abiding enables us to receive strength from God. To receive the whole wholeness. And then Christ abiding in us, all right, that enables him to express his, uh, himself, his love, his joy through us. He depends on us. Our God depends on us. Ain't that something? That's the essence of the abiding. The Lord will give you what you need, the strength, the supplies. He will answer your prayers. He will do everything for you. But he also will be able to dwell in you and then through you express himself. So when the abiding, when we say abiding, is a very important aspect of the Christian life. Okay, I'm going to read a little, a little something and then tomorrow we'll finish it. Hallelujah. What time is it? Is it 10 o'clock? Huh? 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. Let me go to chapter 9. Reach house chapter 9. Okay. Reach house chapter 9. I didn't think it would go this far, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy God. God came through for us. God wanted to say whatever, whatever has happened here is allowed it so that we will see something different. Okay. All right, chapter 9 deals with binding the strong man. Binding the strong man. That is the essence of abiding. Okay, when you abide, this, these things will take place. The Holy Spirit will engage the people you are praying for. Okay, some have chains. Some has all kinds of sicknesses, diseases. All right, but the Holy Ghost inside you. As you, ab as you abide and you cry unto God, the Holy Ghost will engage the demonic spirits that are tormenting the people and break their power over the people. Amen. This is where we are, this is the essence of the abiding. Why we become so important to the Lord. Right? Let me read it. One night when Rhys House and his friends were returning from the village, they passed a group of women who never came to the meetings. They could tell by their voices that they had been drinking. One of the party, that is the party of uh, uh, Rhys House, exclaimed, Where is the power to change these people? You hear that? Where is the power to change these people? It says here, yeah. Ah, it was a challenge and Rhys House took it. Uh, uh, what? Took it. Rhys took the challenge. There and then the spirit gave it to him that he was to pick out the ring leader of those women who was a notorious character and a confirmed drunkard and do what? And sing her songs and bring her to God. No. Uh, and, and read Bible to her and, and give her uh, some quotations. Are you in shame, man? Where, where, where are you? Are you not re re reading your books with me? Are you not looking inside your book? Chapter 9. Yes, Amen. What is he supposed to do? Anybody online? What is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do when he pick out that, uh, that ringleader? To, 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 to wash up with, 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 with water? <laughs> take her through the throne. <laughs> ah, now you're talking good. Okay, he said, like, pick out the character. What? That, that woman? And pray her into the kingdom by Christmas Day. Pray. Use the power of prayer to get her born again without talking to her. <coughs> you hear that? But. By, by way of the throne. Okay, let us, let us now explore some more. This was something new. Okay, when you read from uh, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, Rhys House, okay, helped the, what, the tramps. He went to the village. He did everything. But in all he did, he, he was in touch with the people. In all he did, he was talking to them. He was talking to Jim Stakes. He was talking to uh, Will Battery. 
He, he was contacted them. So by contact, he influenced them. Okay? But this one is different. This assignment is different. Something new has been introduced into this, this prayer intercession. And what is this? This was something new. He had seen many drunkards converted, but the Lord had worked through his personal contact with them. You know, you can do that. You can, you can do some personal contacts, okay, okay with, uh, with some drunkards. You can try to talk to them, yeah. In this case, in this case, however, he had no connection with the woman. And the Lord told him that he was to use no personal influence, but to reach her by way of the throne. That is the assignment God has given to us. To reach the multitudes that are suffering. To reach them and win them for God by way of the throne. Ah, what a power will be needed. What a commitment will be needed. But what a glory God will have. When we, if we pay the price of discipline. And we learn to abide because resource, this resource is going to tell us how he did it. Mm -hmm. How he reached them by way of the throne. Mm -hmm. How this woman that he is supposed to talk to, how she got born again. Yes, yes by way of the throne. He says here, ah, the Lord told him that he was to use no personal influence, but to reach her by way of the throne. It will be a real test of strength, a real challenge. Yes, God. Ain't macho. Is the Holy Ghost more macho than the devil? Or the devil is more macho than the Holy Ghost? That's why it's going to be proved. <laughs> you all didn't say amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, he says here, but to reach her by the throne, it will be a real test of strength. Quote the Holy Spirit. Through him, Reese House, could the Holy Spirit, through him, use the power of the atonement, what Christ did, its power. Can the Holy Ghost use this power of atonement to break the devil's dominion in her life and fulfill the Savior's word in Matthew 12, 29? Uh, what is Matthew 12, 29? Binding the strong man. No man, no man can enter into a, into a strong man's house to spoil his goods, except he first bind him. Then he will spoil his goods. They say, can the Holy Ghost, not can reach house, okay, not can you, but can the Holy Ghost through reach house use the power of the atonement would use the finished work of Christ to break the power of the devil. All right? And then or loose that woman from the devil's control. Can the, can, can the Holy Ghost do that? Now you're asking the Holy Ghost, can he do that? Yeah, you're dealing with the Holy Ghost. That's what he does. That's why we don't know. We just been going to church for so long. We don't know the Holy Ghost alone can do this if we allow him to dwell in us. That's what the Holy Ghost does. That is why he's God. Can he not, if you allow him, that's the problem. If you allow him, can he not through you engage the devil, that demon drinking devil? That binds that, that, that drunkard. Can the Holy Ghost not engage him in battle, overcome him and strip him? Amen. Brother, this is the realm of power. Power by God through his channels. Any one of you can be used by God in that realm. Any one of us, we are vessels that God can use. Are we willing to be trained to be trained by God through the abiding system. That's it. It's the abiding. 
spending that the time, you see, Rich House explains what God taught him about abiding and what it implies, what you must be doing when you are abiding before God. Can the Holy Ghost, could the Holy Ghost through him use the power of the atonement to break the devil's dominion in her life? And fulfill the Savior's word in Matthew 12, 29 about binding the strong man and stealing his goods. That's the, that's the whole question. Do you believe the Holy Ghost can do that through you? Do you believe you online? Do you believe the Holy Ghost can do that on you or through you? Can the Holy Ghost do that through you? Are you willing to cooperate with the Holy Ghost and let him through you save souls, deliver people who are bound by demonic chains? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying can the Holy Ghost, as you go to church, use you. He ain't saying that. Can, can, he, can he through you bind the devil? Can, can he through you bind, engage the devil and break his power? Amen. So here, uh, he saw that if he could get this one visible proof of the devil's defeat, if he can be convinced that the devil is, is really de are defeated, if he can get one proof, that the devil really was defeated by the cross. He said, that's it. That's all I need. God, give me one proof. <laughs> uh, show me that the devil's power is broken by the cross, by the atonement of Jesus Christ. So because of that, I'm going to yield my life to Christ to prove it to me. He says here, Ah, if, if he saw that if he could get this one visible proof of the devil's defeat, the Holy Ghost could apply the victory through him on a large scale. Can you imagine how many people you can bring into the kingdom by the abiding and by the Holy Ghost engaging the powers of darkness that bind them and breaking their chains and freeing multitudes to come to the kingdom? Ah, brother. Now, this is what we are, we are going to learn. To do this, to put this into practice, the Lord spoke to his house as to what the process must be. How he's going to abide in the Lord and how he's going to allow the Lord to abide in him and what he must do when he's waiting upon the Lord. Okay, so now listen to this. To do this, that's the beginning of the instruction. To do this, to be able to allow the Holy Ghost to bind the demonic chains or break their power through him, intercession. To do this, the Spirit gave him John chapter 15, verse 7. Hallelujah. John 15, 7. Let me read that to you. The Holy Ghost gave him uh, it's a resource. I want you to, to pay attention to John chapter 15, verse 7. All right, let's go there. If you have your Bible, I'm going to go there. And then you too, you're going to see what the Holy Ghost told him he, he must do. John 15, verse 7. That's all right. There it is. It says here, if you... If you abide, woo, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall go to church and sing in the choir and everything will be fine. Is that what he says? Ain't nobody on, 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 on there. But what about a church? What, what did he say? If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Right. When you are carrying the people, are you not going to ask for the people? 
What they are needs are, I'm not going to present them to the Lord. Say, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, you ask me for the people. You ask, you, you present your petitions for the people, and it shall be done. So why are you not going to abide? Why are you not going to allow the words to abide in you? You see that? So if you abide in me and my work abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. That's the promise. Listen to what God taught him about this. He says here, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It, will, it would all depend on his abiding. That's it. Everything is going to depend on the abiding. Look at what is given to the abiding. Look at what it is that God has promised to an abiding son of God. Son of God who abides in me. Son of God who allows my words to abide in him. Look at the authority God has given to him. You will ask. And I will do it. Oh, is anybody out there or they are all sleeping? Amina! Oh, brother, brother, brother. Where do you go and hide, brother? Why, why do you all go, brother, brother Charles? Where do you go? Come on, get on board with the Amina system. <laughs> oh, yes, go, brother. Bring fire, man. <laughs> Don't leave me alone to cry Amina and preach too. <laughs> oh, yes, God. Listen, he said, it will all depend on his abiding. Right? That's what he says here. All depend on the abiding. As, <laughs> as this abiding was to take such a central place in his future life intercession, it is important to see what the Holy Spirit taught Mr. Howes about it. Who taught Mr. Howes? The Holy Ghost taught him about this abiding. All right, let's see some. The key text, the key text for abiding is John 15, 7, which you have just read. If he abide. Abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Remember, you are not just quoting scripture. All right? And then God does it. You are going to abide. You are going to let the, words of, the, the word of God dwell in you. You are not just going to read the word. It must, it must dwell in you. The word of God must have its home in your heart. In your being. So it's, it's not just going to read it and that's it. You're going to meditate it, meditate upon it until the word of God possesses your heart. Because in intercession, you'll be using these words. You'll be pleading these words before God. So he said here, this key text, John 15, 7, makes it plain that the promises are unlimited. Oh! Do you see? Amen. No limit to the promise. You shall ask what you will. You shall ask what you will. Hallelujah. Ask what you will as long as you are abiding. As, as long as you remain vitally connected to me. As long as you remain vitally in touch with me. And my words are abiding in you. It's unlimited what you can ask. People, you don't say you, you all don't get happy at all. I don't know what kind of people I'm talking to tonight. You are not happy. You are not saying nothing. He says here. It makes it plain that the promise is unlimited, but its fulfillment depends on the abiding. To have these promises, you must abide. Stay vitally connected. You might not just go to church. This is not church business. This is spending time in the presence of God. 
They say this has nothing to do with church attendance. This is you and God or a meeting in your heart, in your house. Amen. Meeting someplace that you and him alone. You have time for him. You may be in your home, but you, you have to wake up early in the morning so you can spend about two, three hours with him. This is what it's all about. Discipline. To wake up and wait upon the Lord, okay, and present the needs of the people before the Lord and ask him to heal them, deliver them, and also meditate on the word so the word will dwell in your being. This is no church service. So when you go to church, you are not abiding in. That's not abiding. The abiding is you and God. The abiding is you making time for God. A time you choose to, to set aside for God every single day. Brother, I'm telling you something. It's not just, just once every week. Oh, no. It's not irregular abiding. Nothing will happen. They, because, you see, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You all don't understand that you have to be transformed. Right. You all don't understand that it's the, the daily abiding that the Lord depends on to change you and conform you to his image daily in his presence. So don't tell me that you're going to abide, you're going to abide you know, today and then next week you abide another day. Oh no, you're wasting your time. It's a daily thing because God is interested in transforming his vessel so that his vessel will be clothed in more authority. Are you hearing me now? You're going to go from glory to glory. You're going to go from power to power. Authority to authority. That's why it's, it's, it's a daily thing. A daily abiding with God in his presence. You and God. For an hour or two, no matter how long you want to go, an hour, two, or three, that will be good for you. It says here, ah, the, 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 the promise, it, the, the word makes it plain that the promise is unlimited, but its fulfillment depends on the abiding. This is why in all cases of intercession, Mr. House constantly spoke of guarding his place of abiding. Guarding his meeting with God and what God told him to do there. The place of abiding, the place he met God and the, what God asked him to walk in. Because he, gave, he will give you instructions. You have to guard that as you wait upon him. You have to, you, you have to obey those instructions in your being, in your, in your conduct. As you wait upon him, you'll be, you'll be doing it as you are abiding. You are abiding, and the place of abiding is what he's told you to do. Yes, God. But as I hear, most of the time, probably you have to, to, uh, uh, to, to uh, 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 read in the word of God as you are waiting. You have to meditate in, in, in the word as you are waiting. And then as you are praying on, on to God for the people. There are times you have to talk some tongues. All these combinations will help you to spend the time in the presence of God. Yes, sir. It says here, the scriptural key to abiding, the key to abiding, the key text is John 5, 15, 7. But the scriptural key to abiding is in 1 John 2, 6. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought to go to church and sing in the choir every day as Jesus also sang in the choir. Ho -ho! Ho -ho! Ain't nobody there. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. It says here, the scriptural test to abide, to really abide, start waiting upon God. This is what you must think about. First John 2, 6. He that saith, he abides in him. Are you abiding in Christ? 
Are you saying that you are abiding in Christ? You are in Christ and you are waiting upon him? You are abiding in him? He that says he abideth in him ought, must, himself also to walk even as he, Christ, walked. You tell me, what does that imply? You are going to be conformed to the image of Christ, okay? It is about being conformed to the image of Christ. If you are going to be conformed to the image of Christ in your daily abiding, then your conduct must be like the conduct of Christ. Then your attitude, okay, must be like that of Jesus. But I hear, who is it that can live the life of Christ in you and through you? You know the Holy Ghost? Amen. So you are going to allow the Holy Ghost to express the character, the attitude, the desire, the heart of Jesus in you and through you. That's how you walk. That's how you are going to walk. Christ, through the Holy Spirit, is going to walk in you and through you. Your attitude, your conduct, your walk will be by the Spirit of God expressing himself in you. So he that says, I abide in Christ, ought himself. You abide, the result should, should be your, your walk. If you say, I am abiding in Christ, your walk should follow your talk. You don't say I'm abiding, but you walk like a devil. No, you should allow the Holy Spirit to express the character of Christ in you. The Holy Spirit alone can express Christ. You cannot express Christ on your own. The Holy Ghost has to do it in you. So the Holy Ghost is going to walk in you the way Christ will walk if he's down here. So your attitude, you're going to love people, you're going to talk to people with the heart of Christ. You're going to see people the way the Holy Ghost sees them. You're going to care for people the way the Holy Ghost will care for them. Everything will be the Spirit of God, all right, showing you how to conduct yourself as Jesus would conduct himself if you were here. This is the challenge. So the, the, the abiding, all right, it's not your church service that you go to. Ain't no abiding there. They abide in a, a particular set of time you put aside where you meet with God alone. And there you open your being to God. There now you read the word of God that challenges you to walk and think and, and conduct yourself as Christ. If Christ were praying for the people, how would he present them to the Father? If Christ were carrying the burden, how would he conduct himself? How will he talk to the Father for the people? You see, only the Holy Ghost can teach you that. That's why he says the scriptural, scriptural key to abiding is in 1 John 2, 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk. Even as he walked, Christ walked. In other words, see what I'm saying. In other words, it meant being willing being willing for the Holy Spirit to live through him the life the Savior would have lived if he had been in his place. Amen. You, you must allow the Spirit of God. In other words, whatever Christ wants to do to bring this prayer all right, to fulfillment and he tells you to do, you must do it. You must do, follow the instructions the Holy Spirit is going to give to you from the Lord. God, this is what Christ will do it, so you do it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. must love as Christ will love. You must feel the burden, the pain, the anguish as Christ will feel. it. You must allow the Spirit of God to express all of this in your being and through you. Yes, amen. So he says here, in other words, it meant being willing for the Holy Spirit to live through him the life the Savior would have lived if he had been in his place. And then he will tell you something. How to organize your abiding. How do you prepare your abiding? The way Mr. House maintained this abiding was by spending, number one, spending a set time 
of waiting upon God. Once, once every blue moon. Oh, he did it. Oh, oh, he did it daily. Wow. And what are you going to do? Once a week. <coughs> Abiding is not once a week. Amen. Abiding is daily. That's why it's a disciplined lifestyle. Okay. Spending a set time of waiting upon God every day during the period in which the intercession lasted. You see that? Because it's going to go with the intercession. Now you must go. So every, if the intercession is about six weeks, it will take six weeks to finish it. The Holy Spirit will show you how long your prayer for the souls okay, must last. He will, he will guide. He will reveal it to you as you wait upon him. You will know certain things from the Holy Ghost supernatural in your being. Jesus. Right? So the Holy Ghost, you must obey, obey him. Listen to him. It says here, the Holy Spirit will then speak to him as he's waiting. Okay? As he's waiting or, or, or before God, the Holy Spirit will then speak to him through the word. That's why you must read the word. When you are waiting upon God, you read the word. That's one thing you must do. Read the word. Not just pray, pray. You have time for prayer. You have time for the word. Amen. In your abiding, you must read the word. The Holy Spirit is going to show you areas of your life that is unlike Jesus. Amen. That's it. That's why you read the word. Because by the word, the Holy Ghost is going to transform you. So he will point out the word he wants you to obey. Ah, says here, the Holy Spirit will then speak to him through the word, revealing any standard that he was to come up to, particularly in the laws of the kingdom, that is the Sermon on the Mount. Every word in Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, that the Lord wants him to obey, for the assignment is given to him, the Holy Ghost will give it to him, and he must obey it. Are you hearing? Amen. Brother, you must allow the Holy Ghost to conform you. He will show you what you need to, you, you, you need to obey, what you need to live out in your life daily. He will show it to you. And that, uh, then, the Holy Spirit would then speak to him through the word, revealing any standard that he was to come up to, particularly in the laws of the kingdom, the Sermon on the Mount. Any command the Spirit gave him, he must fulfill. If the Holy Ghost, as he's reading the word of God, gave him a command in the word or from the Holy Spirit himself, told him, this is what I want you to do. He must obey. He must obey. Why? Who? Because the way of abiding is the keeping of his commandment. John 15, 10. Okay? John 15, 10. You go, go, go there. Let me show you. John 15, verse 10. Look what he says. He says here, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love Christ was an abiding Christ he was abiding in the father's love because he kept his commandment so he was surrounded by the father's love so you too as God as the Holy Ghost gives you a command in the word to obey when you obey you are surrounded by the father's love you abide in his love are you, are you hearing? Amen. The reason why you must obey the command that the Holy Ghost gives you is that the way of abiding is a way of obedience to the word of God. You obey, you abide. You disobey, you are out of the abiding realm. Okay, so he says here, any command the Spirit gave him he must fulfill because the way of abiding is the keeping of his commandments. John 15, 10. 
the spirit would also search his heart. Ooh, as you are reading the word, the Holy Ghost will search your heart and throw light on his daily life, yes, amen. revealing any motives or actions that need that confession and cleansing in the blood. Yes, he will point out to you, he will point out to you as you are reading the word of God, your wrong motives, your wrong attitudes, things you are doing that ain't right. Will you allow him to do that? If you won't allow him, then there's, then there's no abiding. Because you abide in him, you keep his commandments. Okay? That is the way you are going to be transformed. The, listen, the, the instructions will come from the whole word of God, Genesis to Revelation. But uh, particularly Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Okay? The laws of the kingdom. He will give you works that, that you must obey. Did you know when we went to the village, you said the people, the people have to live the Bible. Read, they have to live out the Bible to the people. Live it. Obey it. Amen. Let the Bible work in your life, your own life, not somebody else. You must obey. And prove that you are an obedient child. That's how you'll be changed. So, so to be conformed to the image of, of, of God, you read the word of God, the Holy Ghost will show you areas of your life that are not in tune with Christ. Ooh, I don't, I don't know whether you all want it. But he will do that daily for you. Daily he will be cleansing you. When, when you obey, he cleanses. When he obey, he transforms. He changes your character. He changes your conduct. He changes your talking, your attitude. The way you see things, everything will come under the Holy Ghost in you know, a transformation. Right? I'm going to stop over here. He said here. And then the Spirit would also search his heart and throw light on his daily life revealing any motives or actions that needed confession and cleansing in the blood. Ooh. You hear that? Yes. So you'll be confessing. You are here you are. You are carrying the burden of the people before the Lord. You are reading the word of God. You are paying attention to the Holy Spirit who are instructions given to you. You must live it out. Okay, And as you are doing that, you are carrying the people's needs not to God. But because of your obedience, God is also changing you. And as you are being changed, okay, the burdens will be taken off of your shoulder and God will answer the prayer for the people. You hear that? God will answer the prayer for the people you are carrying in your heart. I'm not going to add any more. I'm going to stop over here. Then tomorrow we'll also see that, the rest. And then we'll see what else we, we can do. But, but, but beloved, uh, Resource is not an easy book. All right? I want to come all the way to, you know, chapter 10. And then chapter, let me see, for chapter 12. Uh, if, I, if I can get to chapter 12, fine, that'll be fine. But if not, but at least I, I, I should go to chapter 10. Tomorrow we'll finish chapter 9 and then probably tackle chapter 10. But read, this is no joke. This is an intense you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, transformation program. But once you are used to it, once you allow the Spirit of God all right, to transform your heart and change your brother, the authority that you walk in, the authority and the faith and the confidence that God places in your heart, you are able to believe for the impossible. How in the world will Rich House down the line be able to buy a whole, a whole, what, a building for the Bible school only on, on about a, a few shillings? That's all God uh, he had. He put a down payment. <laughs> but because of faith, the money came through. Amen. 
Because he is walked with God and God has transformed his heart and there is living faith in him. So he could believe when you, you, you can't believe, he believed. And he believed that he knew that the money is coming. He knew the money is coming and the money came. You will see signs and wonders as you daily, daily obey God. Daily obey God. You have to master what, uh, master what you have read. Okay, this, this chapter that Reese House is explaining about the abiding, brother, chapter 9, binding the strong man, you have to master it. You have to have time to read it and absorb it. Okay, and have it all in your being. You having a clear understanding of what the requirements are. And you walking in it, pay the price of discipline, and you will never regret what God will do with you. Okay. This is not easy. It's not easy. But we have come to serve God. We want to serve our Lord. We want to yield our vessels to Him. So He can demonstrate the power He can hear or He can pour through our lives. So I'm going to stop here. Ah, Jesus, there's something I must read to you. I'm going to read something to you. Then that's it. Uh, I had something from here. I'm going to read one, just one, one page. One page from Jesus' lips. Uh, I, was, I, I felt, you know, that I should, I should take it. You know, and I, I didn't know why I was taking it. So I took it and opened it and I said, no, hold on, hold on. I'm going to take it out there. I'm going to read. Transformation. Okay, Jesus' lips, page, page 210. Transformation. I am your lamp. I turn your darkness into light. Transforming you is delightful to me. Ain't that something? Transforming you is delightful to me. Jesus lives. All right, page 210, transformation. Transforming you is delightful to me. Only I know the full measure of your capabilities. And I work ceaselessly to help you become all I created you to be. I'm working all the time to make you all I want you to be. So my brilliant light in which there is no darkness at all enables you to see areas where you need to change. When the Holy Ghost points it out to you, where you need to change. When my spirit spotlights an area of sin, when my spirit pinpoints to you an area of sin, you face a choice. You can withdraw from me into the darkness of denial. Or you can come more fully into the radiance of my presence. You hear that? When I show you a sin in your life, you have a choice. Okay? We are withdraw because you don't like it too much. It's painful. Withdraw into the darkness and go hide. Or come on, full, full blow into the light. And let me cleanse you. Ah, so when my spirit spotlights an area of sin, you face a choice. You can withdraw from me into the darkness of denial. Or you can come more fully into the radiance of my presence. If you face your sin head on, it diminishes in power. You hear that? You gain strength to walk in my ways on fresh paths illuminated by my light. I help you deal with your, with your darkness. Not only within you, but also around you. Because you live in a broken world, you encounter darkness every day of your life. You inhabit a rebellious planet that screams of sins lie, of sin lies about who I am. This is why living close to me, aware of my presence, is so vital to your well-being. An excellent way to draw near me is to change your thinking from a monologue to a dialogue. 
talk me, me, you talking to me, I talk back to you. Talk me to you. So we are carrying our conversation all the time. <coughs> Make more and more of your thoughts a conversation with me. When you encounter darkness in your world, talk with me about it. I will help you see matters from my perspective. Thus, turning your darkness into light. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray. Uh, here's, uh, here's the scripture. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 29 through 30. <clears throat> I thank God for this work. Transformation. He wants to transform us. If only we will, we will allow him. When he pinpoints a sin, don't flee. He knows better than you. Don't be like Jonah and then flee away. But, I, but, but surrender to him. Face your sin head on. Confess it to him. Okay? Forsake it. And walk on with your God. And you have victory. But if you flee into darkness, the darkness will overcome you. So I pray that the Lord will continue to shine his light on us as we prepare to learn to abide. As we prepare to allow him, okay, to live in us and express himself to us. And allow us to bring the burdens of the people who are suffering unto him. By way of the throne. So our lives will be a blessing to the Lord. And him will be a blessing to us also. Father God we thank you. For what you have spoken to us tonight. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the word of God. That is burning right now like a fire in our bosom. We thank you O oh God. For the truth coming to us. We cannot flee. We want the truth. And the truth will set us free. Set your people free. And Lord, encourage them to open their hearts, to want to learn to abide. Abide in me. And let my words abide in you. And ye shall bear much fruit. Yes, God. Yes, God. So Father, watch over your children. Watch over your people. Bless them, Lord God. Open the doors for them. Let them be able to, Lord, follow you faithfully with the power of the Holy Ghost. And in the, in the power of the word of God. Reveal your word to them. And let your word abide in their heart. Thank you tonight. For what you have said to us. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge the truth. It is true O oh Lord. What you have said to us. And we shall be careful O oh Lord. To walk. Yes even as Christ walked. Because we want O oh God to bear fruit. To the glory of God. Help each one tonight. And we thank you for victory belongs to us. Victory belongs to all those who want Christ. To, 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 Lord, to reveal himself in their being. And Christ will come forth. Amen. Christ will reveal. Christ will live his life in them. And they will be able, O oh God, to reveal Christ to their, to their families, to their children, to their friends, to their co-workers, wherever they go. Thank you, O oh Lord, for tonight. It's a special night. A special word. And we thank you, O oh God, that we will walk in what you have spoken to us. Bless all of us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Pastor Fields, Pastor Fields, Brother Dwayne, it's over to you.